There's been a huge update to the Flanders map because observe, the train is now a movable object. The F5 now has a radar gun sight, so when you get close to enemies, this icon will appear and tell you where to shoot. Although it was never particularly hard to aim these guns. When flying the Mirage 4000, if you look into the cockpit in the left hand mirror, there's something very strange going on. There's some new tutorial missions that you can get to via the modifications screen. For example, here you've got the radar missile launch tutorial. If you already know what you're doing when it comes to missiles, this isn't so useful to you, but it's definitely a nice feature for newer players. There seems to be an interesting bug when you move the camera next to an SU-27. The new air map has some interesting volcanoes, although rather disappointingly, you can't fly inside them. Wii Sports Resort had this figured out 15 years ago. I don't know what Gaijin are playing at. And for some reason, you're not actually able to load up this new air map into a custom battle. So to test this, I had to do it in a live match. So I'm going to have to apologize to all my teammates. Something really nice that I personally am absolutely loving in this update is that friendly radar no longer pings your radar warning receiver. In ground realistic battles, when an enemy's been destroyed, there's a skull icon. I'm not really too sure why this has been added and sort of makes the game feel a little bit more arcadey. An interesting detail on the Gripen is that the South African flag is backwards on one side of the plane, but this seems to be historically accurate to how the plane actually was. At least for the photographs I found. If you die in battle, you no longer have to worry about activating backups beforehand as you can use your backups immediately during battle. The premium challenger 2 in the game files is called Megatron for some reason. So watch out if you're planning to be an Autobot. If you're planning to play the Kika, it's good news because the Otsu modification that gives you the second gun has been moved to rank 1. So the stock grind should be a lot easier. The Mirage 2000C now has a drop tank, so if you are running out of fuel, good news for you, I guess. All the variants of the Jaguar now get access to an ejection seat. The F-104s also get access to an ejector seat, although you don't get the version that ejects the pilot downwards. It's a little bit more convenient now to purchase the Expert and Ace Cruise, as now there's a button that lets you do this immediately. Probably just so they can make more money off misclicks. There's now a special achievement if you're able to get enough spawn points to drop the nuke in ground forces and end the game early. Now, I've got a question. I want to hear this in the comments, what you think. When you see an enemy coming in with the nuke plane in ground forces, do you salute their achievement and accept your defeat? Or are you fighting to the bitter end trying to shoot down their plane? Because there's now a reward for shooting down an aircraft with a nuclear bomb. So it's a bit more of an incentive to shoot down that enemy bomber and trying to continue the match. I've definitely seen a lot of emotional posts online when it comes to dropping the nuke and getting shot down. So I think there's going to be a lot of upset people when they hear about this change. But it's hard to deny that everyone wants to win and get that RP bonus for winning the match. So it doesn't seem completely unreasonable to shoot down the bomber. I'd really love to hear what people think about this in the comments. If you speak Portuguese, Spanish, Hungarian, Korean, Serbian and Turkish... There's a few more voiceover phrases added to the command messages. I'm a simple monolingual moron, so I can't really verify how good these are, but if you speak those languages, I hope it makes the game better for you. If you're a PBY enjoyer, it's good news because these planes have got a bit of a visual upgrade. The F4D has had the amount of ammunition it carries reduced from 280 rounds to 260, which is quite annoying as I feel like you never particularly had an abundance of ammo on this aircraft in the first place. The Ground Forces test drive has got a bit of a makeover and things are a lot higher resolution. Notably, there's mountains in the distance. And I thought I would mention it here just because I haven't had a chance to really mention it anywhere else, but... Because the drone technically counts as an air vehicle, you can use the console commands in the ground forces test flight. What it means is we can explore this brand new test drive at 10 times normal speed, which is certainly an interesting experience. You can also still find the little campsite in the middle of the trees here. The tank that drives out here is still available to shoot at. Pretty much anyone who's familiar with the ground forces test drive is going to be very familiar with this. The Gripen in the British tech tree has the wrong image on its stat card and you can see the Swedish roundels instead of the South African ones. And the Japanese heavy bomber GA-10-1 now has access to 1500 kilogram AP bombs. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, you're definitely going to be wanting to click on this video to learn about the one of the most powerful tanks in War Thunder.